Hey guys, welcome to Conversations with Christians. This is the channel to where we help encourage you to engage in dialogue, to grow as a disciple, and to defend the historic Christian faith. So today's video, we're going to be talking about a book that you may have heard about that's vastly popular called Jesus Calling. And this is a, kind of another warning video, like similar to the one that I did for the Passion Translation. If you haven't checked that out, um, please do it. I think the Passion Translation is something we should be very wary about and uh, it has a lot of popularity. So sim in a similar vein, the devotional Jesus Calling by Sarah Young, uh, I, I, I want to stamp a similar warning to it for you. And we're not going to go into a tremendous amount of detail. I've got it here. Um, but I, I want to give you a couple of things to think about as you approach this book, or you might approach someone you know, a fellow believer that has this book. It's very popular. Uh, this was given to me some time ago as a gift, and I, I actually have two copies. I don't know where the other one is. Um, never really got around to reading it real thoroughly, just kind of sat on the shelf. But then I started to see some buzz about it. Not a lot, but here and there. And so it's really over the past couple of weeks just been uh, on my mind to put something out about it. So um, I wanted to share a little bit about this with you. So it is a vastly popular book. I saw it in Walgreens the other night. Anywhere that might have a small, I mean, not a, not profound, like we're talking about Walgreens here, uh, section on self-help books or Christian books or anything like that, there's a good chance that Jesus Calling is going to be one of those books. They've got uh, Jesus Calling and, and Sarah Young, who's the author, now has a podcast, a YouTube channel, a magazine, several other books that have all spurred from the popularity of this one book. Now, Sarah Young uh, was a missionary, uh, Christian counselor, grew up in a very missions-driven family, and I'm going to show you in just a mo uh, show you in just a moment about um, some of the background on where her inspiration came from in this book. And what is interesting to note is I have the 2003, should have wrote this down, 2004 version of the book here. In the later edition of the book that came out in some 10 years later, uh, the reference that I'm about to share with you was actually removed from the introduction, which should be a red flag in and of itself. But there are some, there are some things that are much, much more serious that we need to consider as we get into this. So before we go into the book itself, just to give you a little bit more perspective on what we're talking about here. So uh, this is the book, Jesus Calling, and just to give you another reference on its popularity, you can see the uh, number, the amount of ratings here. And interesting enough, it's the number one bestseller in Catholicism category, <laughs> which Sarah Young is not a Catholic. Um, she's Presbyterian, and I'll talk about that too a little bit later. Uh, that surprises me. I actually didn't notice that when I first looked at it. Um, but this is her website. You can see Tim Tebow is on the podcast. So obviously, uh, she recruits some very big names, uh, for her show. Uh, you've got the magazine, the shop discussion, discussion guides, YouTube channel, other, uh, editions of the book. Um, Jesus calling for moms, Jesus listens, Jesus always, um, things like that. Uh, you can see she's been featured on all kinds of things. This book is vastly, vastly popular. And, you know, one of the objectives I have with this channel and the Facebook page and all that stuff is that I want to encourage Christians to to take some interest in doctrine a little bit. I'm not saying that you have to beat people over the head doct with doctrine. And we're not trying to learn doctrine just so we can know which denominations have it right, you know, and which are wrong. Uh, but the, our understanding of doctrine... Have, they have, it has real life applications. And it's things like this that I think if we um, took doctrine a little bit more serial, seriously as a church, we would be on guard for. And things like this wouldn't creep in so easily and with such a wide scope throughout the church. Um, here's her YouTube channel. You see just the, the, I guess, which is the same thing as her podcast. But on YouTube alone, she's got... 32,000 subscribers, and of course, that doesn't count for Spotify and all that other stuff. But um, I'm probably thinking by this point here, uh, wanting me to get into what the issues are actually with this book itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read to you real briefly from um, her intro here. I can't see. I highlighted. Ooh, light's too bright. A couple of uh, passages here, and I'm going to share it with you. 
And I just want you to think and kind of exercise your own discernment and see what stands out to you as I read a couple of these lines. Um, so she's talking about her life growing up as a missionary, going to school, going to seminary uh, or Bible college, and um, her husband is a church planner. And so they're, they, they live in a few different countries, um, and she's got some time on her hands at one point. She's just yearning for the presence of God. Um she says, during the same year, I began reading God Calling. Now, we'll look at this in a second because this is the reference that was edited out of the later edition of the book, but it's really important. So she says, I was reading God Calling, a, de a devotional written by two anonymous listeners. So this book she's talking about was written by not named authors, but two anonymous listeners that were, you know, listening for God's word. These women practiced waiting quietly in God's presence, pencils and paper in hand, recording the messages they received from him. They waited to hear God's voice. They waited with pencil and paper. As we've talked about before on the Facebook page, I don't think I've gotten into it um, in a video format yet, but that this is called automatic writing. This is actually a, a new age practice of automatic writing where you almost surrender your consciousness to a bit and you just write what the spirit, as they would say, the new age practice, uh, would channel through you. Now, I don't think they would probably describe it in, a, in the same way, but you can see that this practice is rooted uh, in, 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 in the similar avenue in that new age practice of automatic, automatic writing. Anyways, so the women practice waiting quietly in God's presence, pencils and paper in hand, recording the messages they received from him. Uh, the following year, so she, she goes on. She says, the following year, I began to wonder if I too could receive messages during my times of communing with God. I knew that, the God, that God communicated with me through the Bible, but I yearned for more. Increasingly, I wanted to hear what God had to say to me personally. Now, one thing that stands out to me there is, you know, guys, the Bible is personal. The Bible is written to you, the believer, specifically. It is God's gift to us. Now, I can see how we might not feel that way at times because, you know, we're at a church full of people and in a world full of people. And, you know, the Bible in, in an idea is really is written for as God's word for everyone. And um, but the thing to think about is God foreknew us. He didn't foreknow us in an ambiguous sense. He knew your name. He knows your name. He has the Bible with you in mind. Everything you need is found between the covers uh, of your Bible. It is God's word. It is inerrant. It is infallible. It is completely sufficient for teaching us every good work. It's got everything that we need, and it, it, and it is personal. It is personal. So don't feel like the Bible is not, though I understand how you may feel that way, but remind yourself, God foreknew you, foreknew you specifically. He knew your hairs on your head and things like that. The Bible is God's gift to us with you specifically in mind. So she goes on to say, I decided to listen to God with pen in hand, writing down whatever I believed he was saying. I felt awkward the first time I tried this, but I received a message. She goes on further to say, I knew these writings were not, were not as inspired as Scripture is, but they were helping me grow closer to God. So Sarah Young is receiving messages from God, and she's writing them down, which ultimately uh, you will find on the pages of this book. Now, there may have been several red flags that jumped out at you there as I was reading through that, and I elaborated some on uh, the ones that, that jumped out at me. Uh, when, when I was first given this book and I flipped through it, uh, I thought it was a paraphrase. I thought she was paraphrasing um, some scripture. So I don't think you can see it because the light is too bright. But she has uh, an excerpt, you know, a small paragraph or two, just like a devotion. And then she sticks uh, a couple of scriptures beneath it. And I thought she was just paraphrasing those scripture references. But that is not what she is doing. She is writing down messages that she has received from the Lord. Now, when we say messages, what we really mean is, or the only thing it could possibly be is revelation. This is revelation from the Lord to her. Now, guys, we know that the canon of Scripture is closed in the 66 books that we now have in our Bible. And if you think about it, there is nothing that is... Uh, less inspired or semi-inspired. It is either 
thus saith the Lord, as so commonly used by the prophets in the Old Testament to describe the literal uh, spoken words of God, or is not. There is no room for kind of God's word or kind of a, but not really an errant message. Um, so, you know, the books that she mentioned uh, in the 2004 version, which is called uh, God, God Calling, written by the anonymous authors to two listeners. Um, she has a doubt, or not she, this is not her, this is her inspiration. Um, you can see in the editor describing the story of this book, he says, not one woman, but two have written this book and they, and they seek no praise. They have elected to remain anonymous and to be called two listeners. But the claim which they make is an astonishing one that their message has been given to them today here in England by the living Christ himself. The messages that they received were from God. There is not room for inerrancy or that God speaks in today in with less clarity than he did uh, in the biblical times that we read about in our Bibles. There's not room for that. It is either God's word, it is or not, or it is not. And we can see the the seriousness, especially in, in the books like of Deuteronomy, where we see the seriousness that that false prophets are regarded and, and in the theocracy of Israel, how false prophets were to be treated punishable by death. It is not a light thing. It's not a light thing to say, here are the words of the Lord, which is what Sarah Young says in the pages of Jesus Calling. Now she says, like I read in the introduction, she said, I recognize that it's not as, as inspired as scripture. But to be honest, how could it not be? How can we receive a word from the Lord and it actually be a word from the Lord and yet it is not on the same level of Scripture? Now, I understand why she would want to uh, or disqualify her own works a little bit, but I just don't think it plays out that way. I don't think there is an allowance for that uh, in our standard uh, in the Bible. I don't think we see precedent for this in the Bible. So either Sarah Young has the words of the Lord that she captured on the pages of this book, or she does not have the words of the Lord that, written down on these books. And they are, her, they are her own words, for lack of a better description. Um, so I really want to draw that. you know. And when I was looking uh, further into Sarah Young and who she was, I was surprised to see that she is a, a member of a PCA church, um, uh, which is the uh, conservative church. Presbyterian church, church opposite uh, PCUSA, um, and that she also is reformed in her understanding. So, you know, the church that she belongs to has a very high view of, of Scripture, a very um, sufficient view of Scripture that 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 there, the Bible contains everything that we need for the life of a believer. Um, so I would su surprise that she is a member of that church and yet produces something like this, which would be extra biblical revelation. Um, I just, I don't see how um, Sarah Young escapes the label of revelation. She doesn't use that herself, but, uh, you know, I just don't get it. I just don't see how, how, how it's not a claim of revelation. Same thing for the God Calling book that inspired her. It's clearly a claim of revelation. So things like that, I think we need to be very, uh, very serious about, very wary of. I'd be curious to hear what your thoughts are on um, Sarah Young and books like this and uh, receiving words from the Lord. And perhaps if there's an angle I'm not considering yet on how, uh, how something could be a message from a direct message from the Lord, be the word of the Lord, and yet be on a different standard than the words of the Lord we find on our pages of the, our Bibles. So again, this was Tim. Uh, thanks for watching Conversations with Christians, and I will catch you next time.